morning so we can all get in the attitude of prayer for the sick. And now we want to also be in prayer for the oncoming businessman's convention here, which begins next Thursday evening. They're going to have some fine speakers at this convention. Tucson, of course, I live in Tucson now. This is my second year there. And as I always said, I'm living up at Jerusalem. I couldn't make a policeman last night. They gave me a, a ticket. I believe that was Jerusalem. <laughs> I was on the road going up here to Apache Junction, and one of my lights went off, the headlight, the dimmer. And uh, I was trying to make it to a filling station, and the other one went off. And I had to look behind me, and I seen his red light. And he stopped me, and he said, you know what it stopped you for? I said, yes, sir. One of them lights is out. He said, that's right. You know it's a violation to do that? I said, yes, sir, but I, I couldn't get to a station. I didn't find any. I was trying to find one. He said, where are you from? I said, Jerusalem. <laughs> he said, where, where? I said, Jerusalem. I said, I'm, he looked at my license and said, you minister? And I said, yes, sir. I said, I'm from Jerusalem. He said, where's that? Across the sea? I said, no, sir. That's up on the hill here called Tucson. You call it that. I said, I've been down in Jericho here ministering in the valley. <laughs> well, he didn't really give me a ticket then, really. But he, he gave me a, a little hurry up and get it fixed. <laughs> Lord Jesus, we commit ourselves to you for this service. I remember all the things that you've told me, and all the things that you've done before the people. To this we give praise and glory. But I remember last fall coming down about 500 miles north of here when you showed me that mountain and said, go back and pray for the sick people until the time comes. And here I am, Lord, not that these people hear me. I'm not praying to them. I'm praying to you. And I'm here at your service tonight to do just as you command me. Help me now, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's turn in the Bible now to the book of St. Matthew's for a, a text. And let's read St. Matthew, the 24th chapter, and the 32nd on the 35th verse inclusive. Now learn a parable of the fig tree, when its branches is yet tender, and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heavens and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. I would like to take a little text out of there on this, his unfailing words of promise. Our faith is based right here on the unfailing word of promise. Man through the ages has trusted in this, in the promises of God. Now, if you ever in your life ever come into a healing service and wanted to play all the tension that you could, I want you to do it now. We want to see the Lord glorified. And I truly believe that every word of God, every promise that he made, is true. And it's to anybody who will accept it. And now, there's some who try to accept it and cannot. There's others who can accept it. And some get it without half trying. Now, that we have to preach the gospel that healing's to all. Yet we know it's not. It is to all if they can receive it, but we know that they all cannot receive it. I just want to be as honest with you as I know how to be. We have to preach salvation the same way, that salvation is for all, but we know that all cannot receive it. All man cannot see these things. Jesus said, Blessed are your eyes that can see, your understanding, for there's many that cannot understand it. And divine healing is for people who believe, but you cannot believe until something is within you to make you believe. Thank you. And then, if the works had been done, Jesus said, in Sodom and Gomorrah, that had been done in the cities of Capernaum 
And those cities that he had passed through, he said they had been standing till this day. And I'll say, if the works, the mighty works that's been done in Phoenix would have been done in Sodom, it would remain until this day, and would not have been in the bottom of the, of the Dead Sea. Now, it's because that all men grasp for it, all that's sick. But if they just stop a minute and try to consider what the word means, faith is by hearing the word. The word of promise. If you don't have a promise, then you venture out upon your own faith. But if you can take a promise of God, that's God's promise to you. The woman that touched his garment had no promise of that. But her faith without a promise got her healing. Now, if she could get her healing by her faith without a promise in what she was doing, how much more ought we to get our healing by Faith in a promise that God is manifesting and vindicating before us, and has brought it to us by His Word. Come around and confirm His Word. Look at these little babies I just dedicated, both of them a miracle from God, past medical understanding. See? Just think of the things that's been done. Now, is God a respect a person? Certainly not. If He heals one, He'll heal the other. There's only one thing you have to do is to appropriate that faith. And that faith is something that you know, not something you plunder at, guess at. You know it. Something happened. Now, through the ages, people have rested up on this. The reason I took this text here for these few minutes is because that he said, Heavens and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And he had made a promise here that that generation, that he would said, This generation shall not pass until all these things be fulfilled. If there would have to be an unbeliever setting present, that's one of the greatest stumbling blocks that the unbeliever ever caught into. They think that Jesus was referring to the generation he was talking to. Now, to straighten that out so we can get to the text, they asked him three questions. If you'll notice back in the, 24th, the beginning of the 24th chapter here, we read these words, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him to show him the building of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now that was when he was still in the city at the temple. Now what? And as he sat upon the mount, he left from the temple and went up on top of the mount, Mount Olive. Set up on Mount Olives, his disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming and the sign of the end of the world? They asked him three questions. And he answers them as they asked him three questions. See, first, when will it be time one stone won't be left upon another? And what will be the sign of your coming? And what is the end of the world? Three questions, and he answers three questions. Great students today place that first question when he said, Pray that your flight be not in the winter time or on the Sabbath day. They place that to a future date of the coming of the Lord at the end of the world. That taken place in A.D. 70 when the great Roman uh, soldier, great... Army uh, Titus and his group come up there, the great general of Rome, besieged the walls that Jesus had foretold him. And see Jerusalem come past with armies, then let him which is in the field don't come back into the city again. Now what good would it do? And some people try to support their doctrine upon that, that people will still be living in the Sabbath hours, keeping the Sabbath days when he comes. Well, if the, if the coming is universal, you couldn't be keeping the Sabbath. For one side, it's the Sabbath day, and the next day, they day past the Sabbath. See? So it isn't the, the Sabbath keeping was for a people in the wilderness, not for the universal church. See? And all these different things, they take those scriptures without having the Holy Spirit to divide them rightly and show what they are. But here's what Jesus was speaking, to my most humble opinion, was that he said that this generation... In other words, 
the generation that saw the fig tree putting forth his bud. See, he said, you're, and when the fig tree is, begin, is tender and putteth forth his, his branches, you say summer is now. Likewise, see, when you see all these things, know the time, when you see all these three questions fulfilled, the time is at the door. That generation that sees the fig tree, and the fig tree is always Israel. And when Israel goes back to her homeland and becomes a nation, that generation will not pass away until these things are all fulfilled. And Christian friends tonight, in this great scruple in the scriptures that people think is scruple, we're now living to see the very, everything that he has said here is fulfilled. Just the next thing for his coming. Israel is in her homeland. She's her own nation. She's got her own money, own flag, a member of the UN. She's just a nation, the first time for about 2,500 years since she's been a nation. And Jesus promised that the generation in the Bible, a generation is allotted to 40 years. From the time that Israel become a nation until 40 years, somewhere within that time, he will come. And if that is true, then that brings the coming. Well, and another thing, every 2,000 years, something has happened on the earth and politics and everything give out. God had to send help from heaven. And the first 2,000 years, the world was destroyed with water. The second 2,000 years, Christ come. And this is 1964. And they claim that we're 17 years short on that. Now, you see, it's at the door. The next thing is watching for the coming of the Lord. All the other signs are blending right in with it. So that's why tonight that I try to get the people to stay exactly on the promised word, just what the word says. Stay right with that. Now, when I come to Christ, I know that I had to have a foundation somewhere to stand on. I was ordained in the Missionary Baptist Church. Then when I seen the doctrine of the Missionary Baptist Church, was so contrary to the Scripture, then I could not pay, base my hopes upon the doctrine of the Missionary Baptist Church. Then I thought I would go over to my mother's church. She was Methodist. And I thought I'd go over there. I found again. So I know that if Jesus come for the Methodist people, he'd sure leave the Baptist. If he come for the Baptist, he'd leave the Methodist. But I found in both groups fine people. I know that if he come for a church, which church would he come for? 900 and something different organizations. He isn't, he isn't going to judge people by the church. He's going to judge the people by Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the Word. St. John, the first chapter, said, In the beginning was the Word. When God, in the beginning, before it was a Word, it was a thought. And then, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It was all God. And then, as the... Uh, God gave out his word, what would be, predestinated his church before the foundation of the world. It would appear before him without spot or wrinkle. And the timepiece is moving right on down. And it'll be there, a church, glorious church, without spot or wrinkle. I'm trusting that we're all here tonight members of that church. And that, there's only one way to enter that church, not by any denomination. You enter it by new birth. And you say, well, I believe that. And if you do, then you'll punctuate every word of this Bible with an amen. amen. Everything the Bible says because it is Christ and you are part of Christ. And the Holy Spirit revealing this truth. Each age has had its allotment of word to be fulfilled. God always sends a prophet. The word comes to the prophet, the written word, a discerner of the thoughts of the heart. Did you always notice? The prophet, being that he know that he was a prophet, is because that the Word of God discerns the thought that's in the heart, foretells things, foreteller and teller forth. Did you ever take the dictionary, the old Hebrew dictionary, and see what the word seer means? It's the one that has the divine revelation of the written Word and how it's vindicated. He foresees things that he foretells and they come to pass. Now, how does that type in with the Scripture? Just exactly. If there be one among you who's spiritual or a prophet, I, the Lord, will make myself known to him, speak to him in visions. And if these things come to pass, then it's God. 
If they don't come to pass, then don't hear him. Don't fear him at all. But just ignore it. But God's word is always right. Therefore, that's how they knew of the man that was speaking, whether he had the right revelation of the word or not. It, the divine word that's written is because he had the word of the Lord come to him. Now, we stay there. We place ourselves and our confidence upon this word. You say, Brother Branham, in the Old Testament, that was prophets. God, in the Bible, the Hebrews, the first chapter said, God in sundry time and divers manners spake to the fathers by the prophets. In this last day has spoke to his son, Jesus Christ. See, it's Jesus Christ and Jesus is the word. Amen. See, he reveals his word by Jesus Christ. The word reveals itself. It makes the word live. That's where the people fail to recognize him. That's how the little woman at the well did recognize him. Why, she knew it quickly. As soon as he told her something was about herself, she said, Sir, I perceive you're a prophet. Now, we know the Messiah is coming. And when he comes, he'll tell us these things, show us all things. He said, I'm he that speaks to you. How could she deny his claim? When the work was done first, the work was vindicated first that he was that prophet. They hadn't had prophets for hundreds of years. And this man had to be a prophet and, and saying by vindicating himself that he was that promised Messiah. No wonder that little woman could run into the city and say, come see a man who's told me the things I've done. Isn't this the Messiah, the very Messiah? Now, we believe that. That God in the ages that he has lotted his word for, that, lot, that word is going to be revealed in its truth. It's going to be vindicated because God promised it so. And it's, it's always true. Noah. It was hard for the people to understand Noah in his day. He heard God speak. He knew it was the word because he was God's prophet. God sent him forth to claim a great flood coming. He built a way on the ark in the time of criticism. It made no difference to Noah how many criticized. He was a light of that day. He was the word of God manifested for that day, for God destroyed the people. Moses, a great, highly polished theologian, great man, born to be a prophet, yet in all of his theology and his, his book knowledge of God, could not deliver the children of Israel by knowledge. You see, the prophet cannot go by knowledge. He's got to go by inspiration. Inspiration. And when the word of the Lord came to him in the wilderness in a burning bush and told him and revealed to him the words that he had spoke to Abraham. And what was he doing? Showing him the written word of that hour. And then called Moses for the word. And he was afraid with an army to try to deliver Israel. And then goes down with a stick in his hand and delivers Israel. The, the, God does it so mysteriously that just simply sets the carnal mind plumb out of its orbit. It can't think no more. Did you ever notice John the Baptist standing in the water? He was the prophet, the forerunner between the prophets and the coming Son of God. John walked out into the water, and he said he wasn't afraid to tell the people, there's standing somebody among you now. Just think of the assurance that he had. There's standing one among you right now who you know not. His shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He'll be the one that'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. He was in the midst of the people then. John knew he had to come in his generation because he seen his position in the Scripture See the Spirit of God upon him? I send my messenger before my face to prepare the way. And he knew the coming of the Messiah was at hand. So while the prophet was standing in the water prophesying, the Word came to him. Jesus was the Word. That's how the prophet knew him, for it was the Word, with the sign that had been given him. I knew him because he that told me in the wilderness... Go baptize the water up set upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on. He'll baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. And when the Word came, the sign came with the Word into the water. Jesus himself 
When he came, he knew he was the Word. He, he was positive of that. For he, when he was just 12 years old, a little boy, we find him, like I was speaking yesterday, in the temple debating with the priest. His knowledge could surpass their tradition. And he was teaching them, that man. And when his own mother come to him and done a, said a word that was wrong, watch the word correct the error. The word always corrects the error. And if people could only see it today, the word corrects the error. The whole thing is becoming an error. But God's word is what's right. He said, heavens and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Amen. And the word that's prophesied for this day corrects the error of the day. Do you understand? The word itself corrects the error. The people of today said, oh, let's join this, let's go to the council, let's do all these things. That's an error. And the word comes back and corrects that error by identifying itself. The hour and the time of the hour. Now, we know those things are true. Now, I'm going to give you a little personal testimony in the next ten minutes. The Lord willing. A little personal testimony that I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Brother John Sherrod, I don't know whether he's in the building tonight or not. I uh, haven't seen his very personal friend, precious brother. He was with me in the early part of the ministry. How many were here when I first come to Phoenix 16 years ago? Let's see your hands. Just look at there. Praise Practically a third of the people. How many of you remember that in praying for the sick, I'd hold out my hand, the people laid their hands on, on me, and then whatever spoke was what they had. How many remembers that? And how many of you remember that I told you that the angel of the Lord in that pillar of fire that met, met me up there and told me if I be sincere, it would come to pass that I know the very secret of the heart. How many remembers that? Said it would be that way. Now, how many remembers that he promised that it would continue on and not long go for a vision? He promised about that pull of that line said you can't teach Pentecostal babies supernatural things. And when I made the third pull, he said, now don't tell nobody about this. You've been trying to explain that other. Don't tell nobody about this. This is the great and final pull. How many remembers that been predicted? See, he never fails. Those things happen one, two, three, just like they were. Now in Phoenix, that is during the time that Mrs. Waldrop here had died in a prayer line with cancer in her heart and was healed. She usually comes to the meeting. She's probably here now. And then uh, Mrs. Hattie Waldo. Then we find out that her doctor had the testimony of it. Give the, the, the photographs, or the, not the, what did you call it? X-ray, X-rays of it. Uh, where the, the woman was, uh, had the cancer, and she's living today, and that's 16 years ago. Now, I'm quite sure that Mr. That's Mrs. Waldo right there now. That's right. That's 17 years this March. There's a lady that was dead and come to life again with cancer in her heart because it was thus saith the Lord. Now, notice, then times I went to California and I believe that Brother John Sherritt was with me then. I was thinking today, thinking on it, coming up here, and I'm pretty sure he was. And wife and I and my Rebecca, a young woman now graduating this year, she was a little baby. I was packing her in my arms. And we went, to, went over to Catalina. was going to Catalina after the meeting is over. Just take the boat over and come back just to say we was on the sea. And the night before we left, or a night or two, Paul Malikian, most all of you know him. Paul Malikian, I believe he's uh, uh, where? Madeira. Where? Madeira. Madeira, California. His mother, father, both have been healed in the meetings. I flew out here by plane to visit them, and they were healed. Paul's wife had just given birth to a, to a baby, a fine people, the Armenian. And they called down there and asked the wife of sick one to bring her down. I said, all right, come on down. So they brought her down there. And that night, she and my wife and I, and it might be Brother Sherrod, I'm not sure. Is Brother Sherrod here, if he was? Was that right, Brother Sherrod? Was you there that night? That's right. There's the witness. I, I was looking to see Brother Sean and see if he was here. Now. She laid her hand upon mine and quickly it buzzed. And look, she has life to kill her, an evil life. And I said, you have milk legs. 
Well, she had no symptoms of it then, but a couple of days afterwards, the doctor was doctoring her for milk leak. She said, that's marvelous, Brother Branham. Now, I'm going to have to say some things here that it's going to be scratchy, but I'm, I must tell the truth, no matter what it is. I've always hated to say that my father was a bootlegger. I hate to say that, but it's the truth. Huh? If there's anything wrong, let's, let's, let's straighten it right here. Don't wait till you get up there. And I, I like to say the good things, but we must say the bad ones too. My wife is in the room, a little black-headed woman. And Mrs. Malikian said, that's strange how that acts on your hands. Said, uh, does it do that on everybody's hand? I said, no, ma'am. Said, can you explain it? I said, no, ma'am. No, you can't explain nothing of God. You can't explain the works of God. You can't explain God. God's without explaining. If it was, we wouldn't have to believe him by faith. I said, the works of God are past finding out. See? I said, it's an act of God that I cannot explain. And she said, well, I, that's certainly marvelous. And, and I said, well, I'll put my hand on. See there? Nothing happens. I said, there's nothing wrong with my wife. Put your hand on, honey. And just as soon as your hand hit mine, my own wife, I said, you got a cyst on the left ovary. Remember that, Brother Sherrod, in the room that night? Well, two years after that, my little Sarah was born, four years after Becky. I said to the doctor that they all had to be cesarean because she can't have babies normal. She was the same way. Her family's that way. And I said to the doctor, look on the left ovary and when you have her open and see if there is a cyst on it. He said, Brother Branham, we, I'll, I'll take a look. But when he, when he come back down, he said, I didn't see nothing, Brother Branham. I said, all right. Four years later, my little Joseph come on the scene. I, I take a hold of her hand, it's still there. And I said, Doctor, look at that left ovary again, will you? And he said, yes, Brother Branham. He looked at it, and it, um, no, nothing there, he said. I took a hold of her hand, I said, but it is there. It is there here. It proves it here. He couldn't find it. Well, it went on. Years passed by. Last year, we, it was our 22nd year we've been married, and I've been on a hunting trip every honeymoon. And I always go to a little place up there on top of the mountain, and I have a little prayer up there and offer God my thanksgiving for a good wife. My wife has been a darling to me. And so I do that each year. When we come over here in Arizona, by the commandment of the Lord, and you've seen in the paper, and I had the little picture here, I showed it to somebody this afternoon, uh, how the magazine packed it, and I stood right here on this platform and told every person here, thus saith the Lord. Something's fixing to take place. I've seen a constellation of seven angels beat me north of Tucson. You remember that? How many was in here when I said that years ago? All right. And you know just exactly how it happened. The same way the magazine even packed the picture, seen a mysterious light, 27 miles high, 30 miles high, 27 miles across. Marshall only goes about eight or nine miles high. You know, they can't figure out what it was. I never said a word about it. Just let it go because it don't do one bit of good. Not one. This same as did about the light that they've taken, uh, the angel of the Lord. They still don't believe it. And now, so when we come out here, uh, uh, constantly in meetings, uh, doing everything I can for the Lord, but I don't do all that I should. I, I know that. I make so many mistakes. And my wife has had to be both mother and daddy, both for those children. Because I'm away and her decision, a father and mother should agree upon their decisions for their children. But I'm not there. I'm in the service of the Lord. And my wife now is 44 years old, just 10 years younger than I. And I come in from one of the meetings. I was tired. Been about a little over about two years ago, I guess, when we come out here. And I've been out. I was real tired. And my little boy, Joseph, he's just strictly a boy and running out in school where he hears everything. One day when I come in, he said something and sassed his mother. And, and then he runs to me. Uh, she know, he knew he'd get a licking from her. So she said to me, she said, Billy, give him a whipping. And he put his arms around me and said, Daddy, I'm so sorry. You know my soft spot. And so, oh, I said, honey, let's forget it. I can't. And for the Wife and I, with this Bible before me, has never had a word in our life. But all at once, being in that nervous time of life, she slammed the door right in my face, and she said, then you should take care of him a while. And slammed the door and went in. I thought, poor little fella. My, she has all that to go through herself. I walked on out, and I said, Joseph, come on. I said, tuck him. I said, Daddy should give you a licking. You know that. But I said, then that you repented. 
See? But remember, my, my patience is going to run out one of these days. And uh, that repentance, you've got to bring forth fruit meets for repentance and prove me that you really mean it. See? If you love me, then you'll mind me. And so I went on out and I said, I'll wash the dust off my windshield in my car. And I started out to wash that windshield. And as I did, a voice said, turn and tell her to read Second Chronicles 22. I thought, I, I just, this, I don't know how I ever thought that. I thought, well, I just imagined that. Kept on washing. And again, it come real loud. Go tell her. Well, it scared me. I went in and read it. You know what it is? It's when Miriam made fun of Moses about marrying an Ethiopian girl. And God said it was better that your father spit in your face than to do that. See? And he called him in. He said, go get Miriam. She struck with leprosy. He said, go get Miriam and Moses. And the pillar of fire came down into the tabernacle. And Moses stood there. God talked to him. He said, if there be one among you, spiritual or prophet, I, the Lord, will make myself known to him. I'll speak to him in visions, reveal dreams, and so forth. He said, but my servant Moses, there's none like him in the land. He said, didn't you fear God? And Miriam, being a prophetess, was stricken with leprosy. And Moses interceded for her, and she lived. Then that scared me. I'd forgot me. I didn't, I didn't notice it, but he did. He was the one that noticed it. That's my wife. I'd die any time for her. But God noticed it. Now, this is the truth. My Bible laying here in front of me. And I went in and... She had went into the room and shut the door and was sewing on the sewing machine. And I knocked on the door and I said, Sweetheart, I want to talk to you a minute. She said, What do you want? I said, Honey, open the door right away. I got the word from the Lord. That kind of sobered her up a little. So she opened the door and we come in. And I said, Sweetheart, I, you know, as much as I love you, I, I, I never thought nothing about that. She said, Well, Bill, if I'm so nervous. I said, I know, but he didn't like that. That didn't please him. He told me right there in the tree, that tree there, that little palm tree in front of the house there, come in here and read the scripture to you. And I read it. So help me, within a few days, she took a pain in the left side. We had to go home. And it kept getting worse. I prayed for her. It kept getting worse. I took her over to my doctor, friend in Lowell, Dr. Sheen, specialist. He examined her and said, Miss Branham, tell Brother Branham I want to see him. She said, Doctor, what did you find? He said, I'd rather tell him. So, me and he called me. And I come over and he said, Brother Branham, she's got a cyst on the left ovary about the size of a woman. And I went back home with her and I said, Do you remember? She said, That happened with Brother Sheridan. If I'm not mistaken, over there in California, you've told me that for 16 years now. I said, That's right. That's just showing up. She said, Billy, you think it was what I did that morning? I said, I don't know, honey. I, I just can't say. Well, we put our arms around one another, started weeping before the Lord. I went in the room and I prayed for her with all my heart. Dr. Sheen, I called him back. I said, Doc, what should we do? He said, should come out of there. And I said, just let it go a little bit. He said, I'll tell you, Brother Branham, maybe I'd better send you up to a female specialist with her, a good friend. He's a Christian, too. And I said, well, what about you, Doc? He wanted to get it off his own hand, you see. He said, uh, I send you up there. He loved me and he respected my work for the Lord. And he told this other doctor about it. And I took her up there and they examined it and then drawed a diagram of it. Drawed a diagram and uh, what, asked what size it was. He said, bring her back in about 30 days. In 30 days, I brought it back. It changed from a walnut to a lemon. That quick. And all those years it laid like that. Then the Lord spoke to me and sent me out back again. I come back out here. And then when we went back on our other vacation, they took another x-ray of it. It was the size of an orange. He said, Mr. Branham, I sure appreciate your faith in Almighty God. He said, I'm a Christian too. Dr. Sheen tells me that you're a faith healer. I said, he just didn't understand. I'm not a faith healer. I said, I just believe God. And I said, we understand this case. And he, uh, he said, Mr. Branham, you got a fine wife. I said, how well I know it. He said, if that gets soft, it'll go malignant. And then you ain't going to have no wife. And I said, I realize that, doctor. I said, are you against it being taken out? I said, no, sir. But I said, we have a reason. Just let it go a little while longer, won't you? He said, well, I'll tell you. He said, they say you're living in Tucson now. And he told me the specialist that he's a friend of mine. said, I moved to Tucson and tried to live there once. He said, it's a little too dry for me. He said, this man is the best there is west of the Mississippi. So he said, I'm going to send the x-rays and diagram and all over to him. 
So we sent it down to Tucson, and the man, when he got over here 30 days more, we took another look at it, the man did, and he said, it's the size of a grapefruit. Getting real big, must come out at once. Well, I had to go, I went up north, and went on my vacation, come back, and went to New York, to New York City, at the Mars Auditorium for a revival. On the road back, I had to stop in Louisiana, the brother Jack Moore. I called the wife the night going through, and she said, Honey, tomorrow I've got to go to the, the doctors again for an examination. And she says, Bill, I haven't been able to move my left leg this week. It's sticking plumb through my dress. Out like this, the swollen out, growing fast. And said, it's so sore, I can't even put my hand out. So this week, I just had to put one leg out at a time and move like that. And I said, honey, he's going to want to take it out. And I said, if he does, be right through Christmas time. We can't come back here, uh, back home. And she said, I know it. She said, well, what must we do? I said, well, just tell him, if you just let it go to after Christmas, then we'll have it taken out immediately after Christmas. Because I want you to come back home again before you go to the hospital. And I, she said, now, I'm going tomorrow about... Three o'clock, something like that, and that'd be different in our time. She said, you'll have your first service in the Shreveport, then you call me afterwards. I said, all right. A lady friend down there, a very fine Christian woman, they were here Sunday. I don't think they are tonight. They'll come up. Uh, Norman, uh, Mrs. Norman. Oh, would you be here, Mr. and Miss Norman? I don't know whether they're here or not. Uh, Brother and Sister Norman from Tucson. She was the one who, I think they can't come every night, so she'll be here tomorrow night, I suppose. Is there a brother, Sister Norman's brother here? I think he comes. Is he here? There's the family. Any of the family here? Oh, yes, sure. There they are back in the back. All right. She taking the wife over. Now, the morning that I left, at our home, we always had to get up. And when we go to pray, when we leave, we take the children and all of us stand around towards a picture of Jesus in our front room, Hoffman's head of Christ at 33. And we'd all gather around there, the children, and each one of them would pray for me. The wife would pray for me. And then I'd pray for her. And then I'd go overseas, wherever it is. And we'd commit ourselves to the Lord for His service. You know, I lost a wife once. When I was a boy, Billy's mother. And I'd been there in the house for two or three days. And, you know, the kiddies and everybody there. And everybody gone. And it's lonesome. It brought back all those memories. That morning early, I got up, Billy and Lois there was waiting for a minute. I knelt down and pulled the little stool along the little ottoman, knelt down, looked up, and I said, oh, how I miss them. I said, Heavenly Father, I'm on my road now to Shreveport. I pray you help me down there and bless me. Give me souls, Lord, for your kingdom. Use me in any way you wish. I'm in your hands. I said, way across the desert is my faithful little wife waiting this morning. She's going up there for the get ready at that operation. I said, Lord, I told her last night, ask the doctor to put it off after Christmas. Did I do wrong? Would that term malignant? If I did that and asked her to beg that doctor to turn it off between that time to go malignant and I'd lose her, I'd never forgive myself for that. I said, Lord, I've talked to you now for these two years. Yes, 16 years. But I said, the last two years since that happened, I said, Father, she's never failed to be a real wife to me. When I get ready to go on the services, never one time did she ever complain. Not one time. Always gets my clothes clean and my shirts laundry and everything. Have them all ready for me. And then when I come home, I'm so tired I can't. And usually a woman won't her husband be with her. And I come in, people crowding in. What I do? Get off on a hunting trip or a fishing trip. Did she ever complain? Not one time. Go get my clothes ready. Let me go on. That's all right. The poor little fellow, 44 years old, snow white headed. Standing between me and the public, I said, God, she didn't mean that that morning. She really didn't mean it, Father. Her actions show she didn't mean it. She's just nervous. So help me. For the fifth time that it's been done since the squirrels, then down in Kentucky, then the right children down there, then the storm on the mountain, which I haven't time to tell you tonight. And this time, just to start, there come that light hanging down there. He said, stand up on your feet. And I stood up. He said, whatever you say, that's the way it'll be. I said, the hand of God will dissolve a tumor before the doctor's hand can touch it. I'll have Miss Norman here tomorrow night. 
I never called her. Right, Billy and Lois was waiting on me. We went on to Shreveport, got her on the phone to call her. When we got there, she went to the doctor, and Miss Norman had to help her over, and the nurse in the room to get her gown on to come out for, on the table. And they moved the machines up with the diagrams and x-rays and things. He said, I've been feeling, Mrs. Branham. He said, and the doctor, we opened the letter to see what he wrote in it. This doctor said, Miss Branham is a very fine woman, and her husband's a fine man. He's a faith healer, but he doesn't disagree with you operating, doctor, that should come out at once. That's, we'd read that, see, that tumor should be moved at once or Miss Branham will die. And then, just as the doctor come out to raise back the sheet, to touch her side, a real cool something swept over, and the tumor was gone. Praise God. Praise. There's no tumor. Oh, and the doctor, she lay there and he touched. He said, Mrs. Branham, that tumor was on the left side, wasn't it? She said, yes, sir, it was. So he turned her back on the x-ray machine. He went and got his diagrams. He went all through the examination again. He said, Miss Branham, I can't explain it, but that tumor isn't there no more. That tumor's gone. Now, that's the truth, so help me. God Almighty knows it's the truth standing here. See, just as it was said, but the doctor's hand, she said, wasn't that far from her until a cool something swept over. She could hardly have been helping Mrs. Norman and them, and the folks back there can tell you about it, helped up on the table and the diagram and the x-rays and everything there of the tumor. And there wasn't one sign of it. And she's not had a symptom since, and that was about two weeks before Christmas. God still remains true to his word, both heavens and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. God, who can create squirrels, who can take away tumors, he's still the same God tonight, for it's Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. You believe that? Heavenly Father, who is my witness with this Bible over my heart, knows that word by word that's as true as I know how to say it. What good would it do me to say something wrong, friend? What am I saying this for? That it might encourage you to believe. Now, that great gift, others I've tried to explain and say how it was done. This can't be explained. Just wait. It will not be an operation so perfectly now. Wait till that castle of churches brings on that persecution. That's what will happen. That's the reason I come back among you to pray for the sick. I have never had but one thing that he ever told me in my life. I know that hasn't happened yet. That's some sort of a building or a tent where there'd be a little building set, and I'd have to go into that and pray for the sick. That hasn't happened yet as far as I know. That's the only thing that I know. And when he says those words to say it, the Heavenly Father knows that I stand here tonight, and he could kill me right here in this platform. Yes, sir, he certainly could do it. And I know that I'm well aware of that. And I know there's so many stories today that I, I ain't responsible for them. I'm only responsible for what I say. I, I've got to answer for what I say. And that is the truth, and the Heavenly Father knows that that is truth. Now, would you believe Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died for your sins and was wounded for your transgressions with his stripes you were healed? Do you believe it? Amen. In this day when... It looks like everything's black and dark and dull, but yet Jesus remains the same. Don't you believe that? He's sure tonight. I want somebody to rise and tell me anything I ever spoke in the name of the Lord besides that, but what happened? And how many hundreds of times have you seen him say it? It never did fail. What am I trying to tell you? It's totally impossible for a human being to do that. It's Jesus Christ amongst the people. It's Christ among us. Today, when denominations are saying, come here and come there, it's the old trend of some school or something, which is perfectly all right. It has to be there. It's part of the sympathy. But to me, he's the living tonight, just as powerful and strong to make every word real that he did back there. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you said heavens and earth will pass away. My word shall not. That's how the disciples knew that you was who you were, because you discerned the thoughts that was in the heart. The Bible said in Hebrews 4 that the Word of God is sharper, more powerful than a two-edged sword. Even a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart, the Word of God in the prophets done the same thing. In all the sages gone by, it did the same thing. In the Lord Jesus Christ, it did the same thing. 
Father God, let your word speak tonight that the sick might see that you're interested in their healing and have healed them, Father, and let them have faith to believe it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, while uh, the pianist and organist, if you will, uh, softly, real softly, only believe, and uh, Billy, I forgot to ask you, what numbers did you give out? A1 to 100. Let's start standing. A number 1 to number 5. Stand up if you can. If you can't, just raise your hand. Number 1 to number 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. I guess that's it. Come out over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8. While they're coming, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Stand if you can. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Would you stand up? Prayer cards. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Come right this way. Just keep coming. That's right. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now the boy comes down. Some of them passes out cards, mixes them all up. We don't know where the numbers are or nothing. You see him do it yourself, mixing the cards, and give you what cards you want. And, and that you just call the cards. You don't necessarily have to have a card. Just believe where you are. You've been to meetings. You know, you know what it's all about. All right. Where was I leave off? 20? 20. 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. All right. How many sick and doesn't have a prayer card? Let's see your hand. All right. Anywhere in the building. In there. All right. Just believe now. Now, what are we trying to say? What are we trying to represent? Jesus Christ. How many understands that? How many knows that in the days of his visitation to us on earth, that he was God manifested in, in a body called Jesus. That was God in a man. That's right. Not just a prophet. He was God. And he, the prophets had their part of the Word. Their part of the Word. The part was given to them for that age. But He was the fullness of the Word. How many knows that? He was the Word itself. Now, there is a lot of portion of the Word for today. Is that right? That would be him again. Is that right? So that makes him the same yesterday. How many we got? 25. Now, if we get any farther than that, you want any time left? You got about 20 minutes or something? We bring. Now remember, if people's in here has got prayer cards, hold that prayer card. We're going to pray for every person that comes, it comes, it gets a prayer card. If you just stay with us, if I have to run day and night, I'll get them. By the help of the Lord, I'll certainly get them. Now, if you just give me your undivided attention. Now, how many in here that's sitting out there that believes that you have faith enough to touch it? Now, let's not let it be in vain, friends. There's a lady sitting here in a wheelchair. And there's a man sitting there in a wheelchair. I can see they're sick. Of course, they're not sick, maybe, but they're afflicted. Don't be discouraged, sister and brother. You know, if I could, if I could heal you, you know I'd come do it, don't you? I certainly would. If I wouldn't, I have no, I have no business standing back here. If I have a cruelty in my heart that could take you from that wheelchair or you from that wheelchair and not do it, I'd be a cruel person. What do you say? With the gift of God, you should do it anyhow. Now, wait a minute. No, that's how you don't read the Scripture right. Jesus passed through it where there's thousands of crippled, lame, blind, halt, and withered, and never touched them. And went to a man that had maybe a prostrate condition, something had been retarded, had 35 years, he could walk, and 38 years, I believe it was. See, there's some of you, of course, what if that was my wife sitting there, or my mother, my wife, my daughter, see, or my brother, my father sitting there? Or if anything could be done, I'd sure want it done. But you know, there might be maybe somebody sitting along here looks very healthy, is a lot closer to death than they are. What a heart trouble, cancer. See? A lot closer to death. But is it harder for God to heal the cancer or the cripple? no difference. It only requires if you believe it. 
Now, for myself to show you that it couldn't be me, I'd come do it right now. If I could do it, I'd make a show off out of it again. I'd say, let me bring this man and woman up here on a platform, show you what a great servant of Christ I am. I'll say some kind of words over him, get up now and walk away. Yeah, I'd like to do that. All the crowd would just scream and say, praise God, what a great, powerful servant of God Brother Branham is. See? Now, that's, that would be wrong. But now, Jesus can make both of them well tonight. But see, when a person gets just a little bit crippled, they begin to write way down. They don't want to make it. But way down, they begin to think, I'm past going. I, I can never make it. Don't do that. Don't do that. You believe it. And if I could, I would. But now if you just get all that doubt out of your heart, just don't let nothing come in that would hinder. All and afflicted from birth. Just straighten right out and walk away. Normal and well. That statement of doctors and male brothers, and you see it in readers. That little child right there in California at the Assemblies of God down there at that school, Southwestern Bible School, that child was so twisted and afflicted till even John Hopkins, the male brother, says, not an earthly chance for him. But the Lord is thus saith the Lord. That was different. See, don't go without hope. Now, now for the next few minutes, we're going to pray now. It's got about 12 minutes. Maybe we get the prayer line through. Now, if I get those two, maybe you have some more time. I promise let out at 9.30. You watch. All right. And then we'll, what we miss tonight, we pick up tomorrow. Night. Now, everybody will be praying. And all you out there that now that hasn't got prayer cards or has got prayer cards, whatever it is, you just start praying. See, your faith will do just exactly what Jesus did in the days gone by. You can touch his garment. Now, if everybody will be just real reverent. Don't move around. Be real reverent just for a little bit. Come, sir. We are strangers to each other, I suppose. If I could help you, I would do it. You, you know that. I'd, I'd be glad to do that. But I can't. But frankly, somebody else you're standing for wants to be prayed for. You believe God can heal them? Yes, sir. They're not present at this time. No, sir. They're away from here. Yes, sir. Cancer case. Yes, sir. Is that right? Yes, sir. You believe they'll be healed? Yes, sir. Go and it'll be done. You believe it. That's all you have to do. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. God bless you. Praise God. How do you do? So are we strangers to one another? Yes, Just a man walked in here. I don't know you, never seen you. But and you're here, you see this precious Bible. Yes. It holds a promise. That is that is God's word. Right. And the Bible says in there that the word of God discerns the thoughts, the desires, the intents, the heart, and so forth. Both tells this word that's written, vindicates it to be true by foretelling, and God makes it real. Like you said, let there be light, and there was light. That's right. I'm just saying that to talk to you like our Lord talked to the woman at the well, and like he seen Simon and so forth. Um, you've had some trouble. You've had an operation. Burst it open again. That's right. You understand where I mean why I can't yes, say it right here and you understand right. why. Isn't that right? That's right. That's right. I can't say it here, but you know, I felt you yes, right then when you thought, well, what right. if he's going to say that? Or like that. No, yes, I won't say it because I can't say it here. But it'll be all right now. Thank you, Jesus. Go believe it. Thank you. Have faith in God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How do you do, lady? You believe Jesus Christ, the Son of God? You believe me to be his servant? I appreciate that. If there's any way to help you, I'll do it. There's only one way I can help you, that's for what I see. I can only, what I see, then I say it. If I can't see it, well then, I, I can't say it, of course, until I see it. Because it has to come from Him. It's a divine, it's a divine gift of God that comes from God. Your trouble is in your eye. You have a growth in your eye. Can't see it, but it's in your left eye. Right. But you might know this now. Maybe someone out there might say it. I see she's got some more trouble. She's got trouble with her left breast also. That's right, That's right isn't it? How you know you? Here, if they, that would puzzle you, let me tell you, you're not from here. Yeah. You're from away from here. You're from Louisiana. Right. Go back and believe God and believe God. Thank you. Believe with all your heart. Have faith in God. Don't doubt.
shocked disbelief. How do you do? You're really pressed. That man is suffering right there with oppression also. Kind of gray-headed with a gray suit on, sitting looking at me. Have oppression, don't you, sir? It's left you now. Hallelujah. It's all over. Praise be to God. What did he touch? Not me. That even give that man behind him some courage. You ever want to believe you had TB complications? You accept Jesus now as your healer? All right, you can have your healing. Amen. Believe it with all your heart. Amen. That's the way to do it. Oh, how wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. You're believing, all of you? A man tonight coming right down the road of man. Man sitting right behind him there, wondering all about it. Got arthritis. You believe that God will make it well? You do? Then you can have it. Oh, no. I've been you. Right in the man, looks like. Just going right along with man tonight. Wonderful. Thanks be to God. Here's another man sitting around here with a double hernia. You believe that God will make that hernia well? Amen. You can have it. The other man second behind him has a hernia also. You believe, sir? You can have it also if you just believe it. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Do you believe God? Just have faith. Don't doubt. No distance to God. You believe that? There's a man sitting right through here. I'm my finger right there. He's wearing glasses. gray headed. He's a diabetic. Do you believe with all of his heart God will heal him? His wife sitting right next to him there. Yes. Put your hand over on her if she's got colon trouble. Put your hand over on her and believe with all your heart you both can be healed. Amen. Oh, you believe? Amen. Your trouble is a blood clot. It's in your left arm. You had cancer. Was operated. They gave you some medication. The medication caused this blood clot to come in here in a serious condition. You believe that God will heal you? Then as you have believed, so let it be done to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Look like a healthy woman, strong. Would you believe Jesus Christ, the Son of God, lives? Do you believe that he's here tonight? If I could tell you something the matter with you, would you believe him with all your heart? You're up for an operation. It's female trouble. Ladies' trouble. You have to have an operation. Hmm? You got someone with you that really needs to have an operation too. A younger person. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's exactly right. Then you got somebody you're praying for. That's your husband. Yeah. He's unsaved. Yeah. And he's not here. You believe with all your heart and you'll get saved and you won't have to have the operation. Oh, I believe with all your heart. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Have faith in God. <laughs> you see the way you're walking. Only God heals cancer, but God knows how to do it. Do you believe that he'll do it for you? Yes. And I'll lay my hands up on you, my sister, in the name of Jesus Christ for your healing. Amen. Go now, don't doubt. Believe with all your heart. Come, sister. Asthmatic condition. Ladies' trouble. you believe that God will make you well? In the name of Jesus Christ, go and be healed for the glory of God. Amen. All right. Diabetic. You believe that God will make it well, cure you, and make it heal you? Yeah, In the name of Jesus Christ, go and be healed. Now, if you believe God laying hands on like that, it's got to happen. Yes, sir. Back trouble and stomach trouble. You believe that God will make you well? Then go in the name of Jesus Christ and be made well for the glory of God. Everybody believe? Amen. Thank you. How do you do, sir? Of course, you see you have gland trouble and it's made you have heart trouble. And you believe that God will heal your heart and make Amen. you well? Amen. Go in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. and be healed. Amen. Amen. I want to show you something. Take this watch off. Take hold. You believe God can heal lung trouble and make you well? Yes. Oh, are you sure can? Do you see how that happened? <laughs> Lord bless you. Go and be made healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, let me have your hand. I want you to look at my hand. Ordinary like a man, man's hand. Is that right? I put my hand on. Not changed. Swells up. Little bumps running over. Got ulcerated stomach. Do you believe that God will make it well? You accept your healing now? I do. Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, heal the man for this moment. Lord, take it away from him and he might see and know that is truth. I 
It's written in the Bible in my name. They shall cast out devils. Them that believe. Lord, I believe. In the name of Jesus Christ, let this devil go from my brother. Amen. Let's see your hand again. Now, don't look like it did, does it? You're healed. Go be well. As many conditions, you believe God will make it well? Go and breathe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to be made well. Amen. Have faith. God heals back trouble, makes man well. Do you believe that? All right, go on your road. Say, thank you, Lord Jesus, and I'll be made well. Don't doubt it. All right. Amen. What if I told you got healed in the chair? Would you believe it? All right, just go on your road and rejoice and say, thank you, Lord Jesus, and you'll have what you've asked for. All right. Come, sir. You believe? Yes, sir. I want to show you sort of show on your hands. Tell me, take, uh, look at my hand here. Nothing wrong with it. See? Now it does change. It's swelled up. Little white things run over it. Yes. Would you like to eat your supper and feel good again? Yes. You believe you can? Yes. You believe these things you see comes from God? Yes. Sir. I'll look right back at your hand, my hand again. It isn't there now. They go eat. Your faith in it, brother. Let's say praise the Lord, everybody. He remains the same yesterday. Then. You believe we lay hands on the sick, they shall recover? Sure we do. You believe that, sister? In the name of Jesus Christ, go and be healed and made well for, your, for the glory of God. Amen. Oh, Lord God, creator of heavens and earth, with all the things going on here in the building tonight, we know that you're here. Let the power of God make my sister well for your glory. Amen. Come now, please. You believe with all your heart? You never have to be crippled up then. In the name of Jesus Christ, may she go and be healed for the glory of God. Amen. Go now, don't doubt. Believe with all your heart. Both heart and stomach. Stomach causes the heart. Lord Jesus, make my brother well. In the name of Amen. Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. The way we used to do it a long time ago, bring your... Now, you really don't have nothing to be nervous about, do you? Do you? Not a bit. But you are anyhow. That's right. All of them out there, pretty near every one of them, got the same thing. They have, let me show you. How many is nervous out there? Raise up your hands. Put up your hand. How would you call that bunch? <laughs> Couldn't do it. Well, let me show you that God is a healer because I know you're going to get healed. See? Frankly, it's already over right now. Right. Amen. That shadow went away from her right there. Go on. Rejoice and say praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Wouldn't you like to breathe again good? And, wouldn't that be wonderful? You believe you can? Then go on your road and do it in the name of Jesus Christ. May it be done. Amen. Now you know you got to have help or die. It'll kill you if you don't have help. God's here to help you. You believe that? You sure what an evil thing that is. Let me have your hand here. You're aware of it, was you? Cancer. You swear it had cancer. You believe with all your heart with me? This man must die. If God doesn't heal him, it's cancer. Oh God, Thank you, the word says, in my name they shall cast out devils. Yes. And if you've done it for others, Lord Jesus, do it for this man here. Let the power of Almighty God come up on him and save his life for the glory of God. Thank in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Go and forget about it. Just say, thank you, Lord, and go and be healed for the glory of God. Now, you really need an operation. That's right. Of a tumor. But God can take the tumor out of my wife, can take it out of you. Do you believe that? Amen. Do you believe that story is true that I said a while ago? Here's my hand laying here on the Bible that is true. Now... You know the Holy Spirit, you're, I don't know you, I've never seen you. And if I can tell you what your trouble is, it's got to be something you're telling me. Well, that same thing took the tumor out of my wife. See? Now, you believe I just, if I pray and lay hands up on you, the tumor will leave you. You're going to believe with all your heart? All right, come here. All of you believe with me now. Thank you. Lord Jesus, Thank you, Lord. let your oh. grace and mercy be upon the woman. As I lay hands up on her, and in the light Thank of God's you. Word, May this tumor be condemned, and may the woman live to the glory of God. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. God bless you. Now go believe and say, thank you, Lord, and it'll all be gone. Now, how much are you? 
We're three minutes past time. I admit it, but like in three minutes, I'll be right tomorrow night, Carl. How many loves the Lord now? How many believes that these people are healed? Tomorrow night, I'll try to take a little different, show you all again how that works and how it operates, the Lord willing. And now, the Lord bless each one of you. Is there anybody here that's convinced that they are a sinner and they want to serve Jesus Christ as their, have, accept Jesus as their Savior? Would you like to stand here now and let's have prayer with you? We'd be glad to do that. The invitation's open. We've put these services for he divine healing, but it's not altogether for healing. We pray for the sick and we also the sin sick people. That's first. Amen. We want you to come and come here just a moment. Stand with us in prayer. We'd be glad to pray with you. Do everything that we could to help you. Would you do that? Is there a sinner in the building who would like to take that stand tonight and say, I'll come and accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I want to be saved tonight. God bless you. Here comes a man. God bless you. Is there another? Amen. Could there be another? That's the way I like to see people come. Come right down wide open and say, I'm wrong. I want to be right. And my brother, sister, before this uh, five or six hundred people or whatever there is in here, I don't know. But these people stand here know that it's the truth. Never has the Lord ever let me say anything wrong in that prophecy. How many says that's right? Raise up your hands as a way. It's always right. He'll save you if you'll come just with simple faith and believe it. He knows the secret of the heart. Why do I make that call just at this time? It looked like the billy's buzzing to me. It's because something said, make a call. How do I know this might not be this man's last opportunity? There might be more here. If there is, won't you come while we bow our heads? Come, sir. Thank you, God bless Lord. you. That's fine. Lord, Thank heal you, Lord. him, make him well, and do this for him. Come. Someone else? Three. In the mouth of three witnesses, let it be established. Now, brethren, as you stand there, you're doing the most gallant thing. People are sick. They'll do anything to get well. But when a man realizes he's sin sick, that's the worst sickness. These people come here tonight. I know there's a couple of cancers that left while I've been standing here. That's true. I've seen the shadows leaving. And I'm not a fanatic. I know it's true. Lots of people were healed. But perhaps maybe sometime if they live long enough, they'll get sick again. They may have pneumonia. Something's got to take them out alive. Death has to do it. Now, but what you're doing now, you're going to accept eternal life. Look what Jesus said. He that heareth my words, heareth means to understand. He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life. And shall not come to the judgment, but pass from death unto life. You're doing the most noble thing you ever did. I'll ask the congregation to stand in memorial of this. While we thank pray. you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Some ministers would like to come around and lay hands upon these men with me. If, it'd be glad for you to do it if you do it. Come right here and lay your hands. Thank you, God. Thank you. Everybody reverend. Heavenly Father, into your divine presence, not under emotion, but under the leadership of the Holy Spirit in the hour of divine healing, when they seen Jesus do these same things 2,000 years ago today, and they see him doing it today, many act like they did then. It said many believed on him because of his works. Many believe on him tonight because of his works. Here stands three precious souls Three man. Seemingly, Lord, usually it's women, but tonight it's been man right straight through. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you'll receive their their confession Thank you, as they Lord. confess that they have been wrong Thank you, and they desire to have life and have it more abundantly through Jesus Christ. Take every dark stain of sin away. Hear me, Lord, as I pray. I commit them into thy hand, and by the authority of your word that said that he that comes to me I will in no wise cast out, then you must receive them, Lord, for they have come, and your word said that you would not cast them out. And they've come believing that you will forgive them, and from this night on they'll serve you the rest of their days separating themselves from sin, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you'll pour out the Holy Ghost upon them. Yes, sir. 
that you'll fill them with your divine power, that they not only be Christians but be instruments of, of service, filled to the capacity with the Holy Spirit, that they might help bring the message to others. Lord Jesus, I commit them to you now upon your word that promise that they shall be forgiven. I'll raise him up at the last day, he said, and I know your words are true. We've just been speaking of them. It never fails. And the word come to these men tonight, and they've come to follow the word. And I know that at this junction here of forgiveness, that you do, for your words cannot fail. In Jesus' name, with our heads bowed now, to you, my brethren, that's standing here tonight, you did the only thing that you can do. When you're convinced that you're wrong, then you're convicted of sin, something you've done wrong. There's only one way of pardon, and that's to the cross. And you've walked up here tonight before all these people to accept him as your Savior that you was convinced that you're wrong, convicted, convinced that he's right, convicted that you're wrong. And he died for sinners. That's what he come to the earth for, to die for sinners. Only asking you one thing, to accept freely what he died for you. Will you do that? Will you accept him as your Savior? Put your sins behind you and accept him right now as your personal Savior. If you will, just raise up your right hands towards him. I Thank will. You, Lord. God bless you. Thank you Lord. That means that it's over. If you believe me to be God's servant, then that's according to his word. Your sins are behind you. They're gone. They're in the sea of forgetfulness. He'll never remember them no more. You are new creatures in him tonight. Now, may the, these brother here come and lay hands up on you. Some of you ministers here stand close. Come lay your hands also. And let's bless them if they receive the Holy Ghost. Come up close. Thank you, Lord. Feel this, my brother. the back to the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, as I commit them to you for your servant. Amen. Now, you may raise your hand. These men has accepted Christ as their Savior. Past sins are forgiven. That's the word of the Lord. How many knows that's true? Now, I want you to turn around towards the audience, friends. So he says, if you're ashamed of me, before man, I'm ashamed of you before the Father. He that will confess me before man, him will I confess before my Father and the holy angels. Raise up your hands that you confess that Jesus Christ is your Savior. You're taking for your Savior now. You, brethren, here, raise, has come to the altar just now. Raise up your hands to, so the audience can see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He that Hallelujah. confesses me before man, him will I confess Amen. before my Father and the holy angels. Now, as we bow our heads for dismissing, I want each one of you people that can come by here and shake hands with these brothers and invite them into your church, some of you pastors, that you go on with them from here to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. God bless you. God heal you. God give you grace abundance is my sincere prayer. Let us bow our heads now while I guess Brother Rose is coming for the dismissing prayer. All right, Brother Rose.